All right, you guys ready to see this epic project we installed last October? Um, when you do a project in St. Pete on the water and the client already had coconuts and he says you can take a couple of racks before you get out of here. We're actually here today for a service call. I'm like, I can't believe I didn't make a video here from the beginning. Um, you take coconuts home. So nature's bottled water. I'm gonna cut into that real quick and then give you guys a tour, hold tight. Got nuts? Woo! All right, nature's bottled water. We don't grow those up by us, do we, Ryan? Unfortunately not. Not, not. Cold, cold. Woo! So are you guys ready to see this nine month old install we did in South St. Pete, right on the water, really ultra tropical location. Um, since we've been here, you know, we did it in October, but we actually did the driveway last week. Um, came back and did some touch up, put some perennials in, did some work on the back porch. I'll show you when I get back there, but what's even more epic is the neighbor's house has like a 25 year old Japotacaba in the front yard. So right there is a monster Jabuticaba. I mean, there's citrus in this yard. Um, that's a giant sugar apple behind it, giant carambola, avocado with avocados, big fig behind that, another fig here, some kind of kumquat. The whole backyard's a food forest. Mangoes crawling over the house, so definitely fits the area. That thing's fruited since we've been here twice. Um, there was actually fruit like rotten on the ground when we got back to do the driveway, so yeah, somebody's not picking that fruit, but that is an epic old tree. Oh, there he's out of here. Oh. All right, so out here in the front yard, the Calusio was already here. We added some Suriname cherries and some Grumi Chamas along the front um, and a perennial peanut. We used the yellow flowering variety in here because this is a little bit more of a shade area. Peanut seems to do a little bit better in the shade. There has been a water leak here waiting on the city to get in and fix that. I was hoping to have that done before the video, but it didn't happen. Um, Grumi Chama coming up in the driveway. We've got a little bit of a yellowing uh, scarlet Japotacaba. It's probably not quite loving the Soil conditions here might need a little bit of a chelated iron drench that might help it a little bit. Grafted low quat. Jackfruit actually just went in today. There was some peanut over here. Um, like I said, there was a lot of things that weren't finished all the way because the driveway was, you know, on the scopes to be replaced, but not in the budget back in October. Just got it done now. Um, really nice shell walkways going into the backyard on both sides. All right, so homeowner here has a metal working shop in Ebor. They're going to put some metal screening on the side of the house to go in for the garbage cans. Um, metal gate over here on this left side. That's not quite wrapped up yet. So there's a couple little unfinished details on this one, but I could not not pick up the camera and show you guys what was growing on around here. Um, we went with the cattle troughs up by the front door, some dwarf firebush behind that. The sweet potatoes new. I believe the homeowner probably did those since we were here. The peanut mimosa up in there we did. Um, mango tree up by the house. We also used the Grumi Chama Suriname Cherry Fedge. We kind of ended up staggering them, so you got the two in there. There's a lychee over here. Looks like they've got a sprouted coconut, sapodilla. The bamboo obviously was existing. I believe the mulberry was existing. We ended up um, tying in that those bananas into the gutter right there you see coming down off the side of the house with the drain, with the pit. Those have actually really got a lot of size to them since we were initially here. So this kind of just goes into a storage area on the side of the house, comes out on the other side. As you see, um, there's one of those metal um, arch structures. You can see there's some other really cool ones in the backyard. Plus, he built the raised beds. Vitex here in the back. They've got some tomatoes. We actually just added some Roselle and Molokia here in the middle raised bed. It looks like there's some kale and other tomatoes hanging on in that left bed. Of course, you know, you got the green landscape. You have to have the Tesla with the Tesla charger. That's actually new since we were here last too. Um, but uh, sugar apple, Atamoyas, um, a couple of sweet almonds back in there, another Atamoya, sweet almond. Up along the back, there's actually a wall of Galongal that hasn't quite filled all the way in yet. And I'm seeing cherries on the ground. Whoa. Acerola cherry, Barbados cherry, nature's vitamin C. This one um, grows really well in St. Pete, ultra tropical area. They can almost grow anything here. I look at this as like as close as you can get the homestead up north, um, just because we're completely surrounded by water and concrete. Mmm. I say one of these is like eating 10 oranges vitamin C content wise. So getting my vitamin C's for the day. These palm trees were here. We ended up doing the same thing with this gutter, put in a gutter box, ran a pipe under here. It's actually running over to the banana on this side. There's a big strawberry tree back in here. And the palms, like I said, were here. Mimosa filling in really nice up here by the front of the house. Some areas the mimosa did better, some areas the peanut did better. And this massive papaya was here. Um, this was just 
on a mess like broken concrete when we first started the project. I really should have got you guys a before video. Ended up putting some really nice shell paths in a perennial garden in here on the side of the house. And we've got Katuk and Okinawan spinach and three or four different varieties of edible leaf um, hibiscus, moringa, longevity spinach, um, you know, the variegated and the regular Katuk. So this is all perennials down through here. Ciso, Ciso spinach, I mean, this can just be used as a wrap. You can eat this raw. I really like the young tender leaves. So coming out here eating these. Oh, little edible leaf hibiscus, little katuk. I've even heard this called togan spinach. Getting my greens for the day. Moringa, there's all the shiso spinach looking really good. Okinawa, beautiful with that purple bottom. Here we go, we have another uh, banana, variegated spiraling ginger. Lesser Galangal, Ethiopian cardamom, um, carambola tree. Then we've got some cranberry hibiscus and some Suriname cherries going along the back of the house with the mix of the Ethiopian cardamom, the Lesser Galangal, pineapples, mango, huge beautiful pandan tree that was here. This is an awesome element. So obviously the coconuts were here, the big point sienna was here, um, the pandan was here, and the bamboo was here before we got started. Um, there has to be eight, I think eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coconuts in the backyard. Um, big, large sea grape over there in the corner. On this bed over here on this side, we used lots of perennial peanut, a uh, Turk's cap hibiscus fedge. There's an avocado here. There's a mango behind there. We've got some different monstera in this area. Um, passion fruit going up the oak tree, just kind of starting to take off. And I don't want to get too close over here with the electrical equipment. It definitely tends to piss the bees off but they, they do have some bees here also. Um, behind there, you can see we put the spiraling ginger in with the red cone and the yellow flowers. We ended up taking a huge Brazilian pepper out here. And this, um, this tear out you know, from, a, from a grass hole to an ecological landscape was no easy undertaking. Access was difficult to say the least, getting wheelbarrows in and out of here. Couldn't get the machine in the backyard. This project probably took us you know, twice as long as the project, three times the size, just because it was a small space and accessing it in the backyard was really difficult. So, so looking up onto the back porch, you see these huge Japotacabas by the back of the house and the homeowner here, Rob, watches the videos and kind of geeked out on Japotacabas almost as much as I have. Um, just messaged me again last night about getting some big reds. So thanks, Rob. Um, he's got big sabras here. He's got reds here. He's got scarlets here. He's got miracle fruits here. He's got blue grapes here. All in these really cool metal pots up on the back of the house. We've tied those into the irrigation and they're going to kind of just patina. Um, there's the blue grape. The reds look a little bit mad. I think they need a little bit of iron. They're getting that brown on the edge of the tips. Scarlet, same thing. Not quite as happy. Might have something to do with the salt here also. Uh, that is the true Buddha belly bamboo. And then we put some taros in this area. That metal boxing was already here. I think the jackfruit was even here. The mango was here. Um, we just did this bed today. So this is another one of the beds that went in. Used the longleaf sisu spinach, the red speckled begonia um, in the center just for some color when you come out the back door. So, I mean, how beautiful is this? I feel like I'm in Costa Rica when I step out here, living right on the water, drinking your coconuts. Got your mangoes in the back. And here's another one of those awesome structures. I think Rob told me this was from their wedding. Really cool. And no lack of coconuts here. I think that's the uh, Textilis gracilis bamboo. Now let's see what else is growing on here. So small space, but lots to, lots happening. Probably got, you know, five mango trees. Here's another mango. Um, there's a the black sapote. There's another mango behind it. Some different Thai basil in here, mostly peanut in this area. Um, longevity spinach, Okinawan spinach. There's that other mango I was talking about. I can tell you these bananas were struggling when we started this job and I guess I almost forgot um, you know the whole backyard was dried out here everything was kind of struggling within range of the bamboo we did put a root barrier in here I almost forgot about that that was no that was another part of why we were here so long we did a huge trench going all the way down to the shed that you can kind of see back there on the right um, they started putting some orchids in along here and put a big root barrier along this Tectilis gracilis because even though um, you know, this is a clumping variety of bamboo. The roots can travel halfway across the yard. So they were choking some things out here in the center. And I can tell you just since we've put in the irrigation and put in the barrier, um, everything looks way more lush. Mangoes are looking better. And you got to remember, this was just weeds, um, you know, kind of a grass hole. They didn't fertilize, you know, they didn't really water it much. Just wasn't much hanging on. 
big fire bush. Looks like there's another sapodilla back here. A couple of caliandros. Here's that sapodilla. So we got one in the front, one in the back. Another caliandra. Let's step down to the water. Whoa! And there's that fedge. Turk scap hibiscus. So let's see if we can find some to eat. There we go. I know we got the pinks and the reds growing on in here. Whoa! And this is a favorite for me for kids. Favorite for me as a garnish. Um, just a nice eating flower because it is sweet. I like to pop that cap off of there. And the whole thing is edible. So I got my salad while I was here today, guys. Kind of just giving you a quick pan through of this one because this is a really cool project. I really kicking myself in the butt for not making a, a video here of just a before and after. I might have some pictures. See what I can do with that. So. So pretty awesome little ecological landscape project. You know, this is a great model example of what you can have in your yard. You don't have to grow grass. We don't have to use chemicals. Um, we can have a, a beautiful inviting yard, you know, and come outside and enjoy the butterflies, enjoy the hummingbirds, the bees, you know, be inviting to all the different types of nature and birds. Um, you know, this is, I think, a great example of a, a very simplified yard. You know, maybe spending 45 minutes, an hour a week out here pruning or tipping or harvesting fruit, so fairly low maintenance. Um, I believe the big oak, the shade in the back really helps out a lot with that also. But cool project. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. Make sure you guys pound that bell to stay notified. Most importantly, get out there and pound some dirt.